This storm is coming and it will be destruction. It will be devastating. It will be a disaster and it will be deadly because many are not prepared. And those who think that they are prepared may not be as prepared as they think. I'm not quite sure people are ready for this. Heck, I don't think I'm ready for this, but this is what most of us prepare for and others do not. But whether you are prepared or not prepared, this storm is going to test the limits. It is going to test us all because many are not prepared and those who think that they are prepared may not be as prepared as they think. Let's get into it. I really wanted to get it right. Trying to find some balance in my life. I never really put up a fight. And now I'm losing sleep. What if I lost touch? What if I'll never get it right? Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, whatever it is for you. What's up, cousins? And welcome back to the channel. I missed you guys. Did you miss me? I hope that you did. So I just took the day off on Monday, spending time with my husband and thinking about the things that I need to get done that I didn't get done. So this winter storm that's coming in. Some of us are going to get it, but we're all going to get it in some way, shape, or form, whether it is rain, wind, snow, blizzard, all of the above. So in this video, I thought I would take you around my home, some of it, and show you exposed pipes that should be covered because when I went to just do a walk of your home, those are things you need to do. I'm going to go over a list of things that you need to do before and after so I don't want to make this a long video but it is gonna be a helpful video I hope for some and if you have tips and ideas put them down in the comment section below because we are all here to help each other to learn from each other and be kind to each other down in the comments so there are going to be areas around the country where you're gonna get freezing rain you're going to get snow. You're going to get sleet. You're going to get some form of precipitation that can be deadly and dangerous. Even if it doesn't snow in your area, but it rains in your area and temps are freezing and below zero, 32 or below. And some people are going to be below that, below zero. Negative. Can you imagine? In the South. But that is still dangerous. Because what is going to happen is going to freeze. It's going to create black ice. And that is something that you cannot see when you are driving. And so many people lose their lives that way or get seriously injured. So I want you guys to stay as safe as possible. There are going to be places. I know in Tallahassee, they were saying that the temp, no, was it Tallahassee or Tampa? Either way. Florida is going to get temps 24 and below in some areas. Guys, this is serious. A lot of people are not prepared for this, whether it's their home is not prepared or they're not prepared um, clothes-wise, how to dress within their home. If they lose the power, they may not have those items there because they live in a different climate than most of us do. So that being said, go out as soon as you possibly can, get the items that you need for your home, get extra food for your home, preferably shelf-stable food. I would not go and stock up on a bunch of meat considering you may lose power. Now, if you already have that, that's a done deal. So you're going to have to deal with how you're going to how you will preserve that food if you lose power. I really do suggest if you do not have a generator a gas generator I have a few solar generators but our gas generator we no longer have it it's not working so that is something that I have to add to our stockpile I hope to do that get to do that this week before the weather comes in but if I don't I do have those backup of the solar generators but that is something 
that could save your life. That is something that could save your food, <laughs> provide heat, all of those things if you do it in a safe manner. You would never run a generator of any kind that's gas or propane in your home. You definitely need to have that in an airy location and not in your garage as well because carbon monoxide poisoning is something else that is deadly. Here are two of my solar power backup generators okay so this is the ocmo right here i'm gonna power it on we are fully charged on the ocmo thank goodness because i cannot find the cord to this because we're renovating over here is the opez so this came with the bag now i'll have down in the description box links to these where you can get a discount on these if you want to purchase one it has a bag with it. It also has a solar panel that comes with it as well. So in pulling this out, I thought that it was charged and it was, but now it's not. So it's a good thing to go through your preps and make sure you're charged up on your solar power banks. You guys make sure it's working. So I did plug it up and it is charging right now. I will check back in about, well, I'll check it in the morning, but it only takes around four hours to fully charge all the way. And that's just me plugging it up right there and letting you see that it is charging. It comes right on once you plug it in and it will charge for the next four hours if I'm up because it's late right now. It will be fully charged for me. You don't want to not, you don't want to have something that you need in an emergency and it is not operating. So here's this um, cord that goes to it where you can charge it in a vehicle as well if you don't have power in your house to charge it up. The Aquamo also has that backup cord as well. So this is the Opez solar panel right here, but this solar panel can go to either of these um, power banks. And they have the little legs that the orange piece, those are legs that open up and it'll stand up and you can face it towards the sun and charge it that way as well. Make sure that you get your carbon monoxide detectors, your smoke detectors and your fire extinguishers. Over Thanksgiving holiday, I was cooking the night before and cooking part of the morning using my oven, which is propane and my uh, carbon monoxide detector went off. I'm so thankful that we had some in the home on every on each of our levels because that is something that can wake you up out of your sleep that can save your life. Okay, we should not play with that. And having a fire extinguisher is very important and having it near the source of the fire is important as well. I keep mine in the kitchen because of my stove and how I'm cooking. So be safe. If you have pets, you guys, inside or outside pets, they should be inside during this time. Even if it means making a place in your garage for them because you don't want to bring them in because it's an outside pet and you want to bring it in, but you don't want to bring it in your house. Put it in the garage. Put your pet in the garage. Make it comfortable. Put blankets out there. Put a bedding out there. If you can put a heater up high where they can't knock it over or get a heater that buzzes if it knocks over or turns off if it knocks over. So I'm going to show you guys this heater right here again. Uh, most of you saw me get this from Costco and it is a heat dish tilt. It has the high level, medium, and of course low. And I just turned it on so you could see what it looked like. I keep it out in my garage. I have it plugged in right here. And I got this from Sam's Club. And you can turn this on and off right here if you want to. And I have to even mess with it. Um, what I was saying about this if you move it it's going to buzz loud if it falls over it is going to buzz loud and it sounds like an old school dryer so i'm going to show you so this is and it they had this i think it was like on sale so i'm gonna 
move it. If it does that for too long, it'll shut itself off. You see it turning itself off, and then you'll have to reset it. So I'm going to let it come back on. If it falls over, it does the same exact thing. I mean, with the slightest little move, it's gonna, it's going to buzz. So it's a great little heater out here, and it does heat up this area nicely. This can be put up high. It has something on it where you can actually hang it, you know, and the base is solid. It doesn't tilt easily. So that's something that you can do as well. Just don't leave your animals outside in this weather. That is not something you want to do. Trust me. And no, I will not be bringing my rabbits or my chickens inside. So don't even bother asking me that down in the comments because that is a heck no. That is not what I'm going to do. But I am going to winterize them out where they are. Do a walk around. When I used to do property preservation, that's what I would have to do. I would have to do a walk around of the home, inspect with my eyes, go into the home, see what's there, see what needs to be there before that cold weather comes in. We would also have to drain the hot water tank and all that stuff, but you don't have to do that. That's for an empty home. I personally never really paid it any attention because, well, you know, when you're married, you like, you just don't pay that any attention. Oh, my husband will take care of that. Well, my husband is on the road a lot. So there's a lot that I have to step up and I have to do because I don't have thousands of dollars to put into a broken pipe because I could have just took that extra step. And even if you take the extra step, it still may not help, but i rather take that step than not. So I will be going out to Lowe's to purchase um, insulators to go over my pipes. So they don't cost that much. Well, they might now with inflation, but they shouldn't still, they should still cost pennies on the dollars. Go out, get some of those if you have exposed pipes. That's what I'm going to do. So you're checking for those pipes that are in the attic, in the garage, in the basement that typically will drop faster than in your home and you want to insulate those things you also want to like if your temps are going to be in the teens or below zero open up your cabinets to your kitchen and your bathrooms just so that heat can get in there and keep those pipes warm you're also checking your windows. Do you have cracks in your windows? Do you need to put sealant around your, your windows? Do you need to put plastic over your windows to keep the drafts out? Do you have cracks underneath your door? Do you need to put a towel down at the base of your door or old sheet or something just to keep the drafts out and try to keep the heat in? I am speaking from experience from being on the struggle bus of houses, apartments, or whatever, um, when my older two kids, who are now in their 30s, were younger. And we I lived in the old homes and cracks, you know, thin window panes and cracks under the door. So these are all things that I had to do. That's why I am telling you guys now, just double check and make sure that you don't have that situation going on so that you can stay warm within your home. Just be aware that the pipes that you have that are exposed to the weather, to sub-zero temps, those things can and will freeze. The other morning, I went out to give my animals water. My water hose was frozen. And I didn't even think twice about it in order to take the preventative steps ahead of time. I didn't pay attention to the weather that night. That's something that you have to do, especially if you have animals that you have to get water to on the outside. And how do you get water to your animals on the outside? Well, let me tell you what I'm gonna do. There is no one magic trick for anything. Many people are gonna do many different things, whatever benefits their homestead, their home or whatever they're doing. So water hose was frozen. 
Well, I just waited. When I didn't have to wait, I have access to water in my husband's garage. He has these, he, we have a huge fish tank. So he has this whole water filtration system set up in the garage. He has salt water and then he has fresh water. So in the event that it freezes again, then I can just use the fresh water to fill up a bucket and then go give my animals water. But in surveying where he has that set up at is in the garage, which means is exposed to colder temps and those pipes are exposed to colder temps. So I will be insulating those pipes as well because that is my backup water and I need to protect it as well. So how do I maybe keep my water hose from freezing? Well, tonight what I did was I left it dripping. That's what you can do for your pipes on the, for your faucets on the inside. Leave the cold water tap dripping. I know that goes against the principles of conserving water, but in freezing temps, I'd rather do that and and not have a frozen pipe than to not do it and have a frozen pipe that's in my wall or whatever and then it bursts and now my house is flooded and I'm having water damage. Something else you want to think about that I, you know, didn't think about at the time. This was a, a little while ago when we first moved here. I forgot to close the garage door. Make sure your garage doors are closed. So my lower garage, my bedroom sits above it. I forgot to close one of the doors on that garage. That whole entire night, I was so cold. I couldn't figure out why is this room so cold? Why is it not warming up in here? I had my heater on in here. And come to find out, I, I walked around the house. I got up late and I walked around. I said, oh my God, I left the garage door open. That is why I was so cold. So you want to try to keep the heat in your home. Close your garage doors, okay? Also, keep your thermostat at the same temp. So if you have it set for... A certain thing th during the day leave it set for that at night as well the only time you should really adjust your thermostat is if you're going to be gone for a long extended period of time and then you want to adjust it and turn it down but not below at least 55 degrees because if you turn it down even lower than that it's going to take even longer for your home to heat back up once you get home so those were all things that you can do to for the short term, you know, because temps are about to drop this week and dangerously low. Um, but for the long term, I was reading this article and it said for the long term, add insulation. So you're going to add insulation to the attics, the basement, the crawl spaces. Insulation will maintain higher temperatures in those areas and to prevent drafts, seal the cracks and openings around the windows, doors, and at seal plates where the house rests on its foundation. So those are also some good tips in this article. So what do you do if your pipes do freeze? So I'm going to read a little bit of this article and I will leave this article linked down in my description box, you guys. Make sure you share this video out with as many of your friends, your family members, your social media sites, what, wherever you're at, share it out so other people can be aware of things that they should do. Most of these things we already know to do, but we just forget in the moment. So this is just a refresher, a reminder. If you turn on a faucet and only a trickle comes out, you may well have a frozen pipe. If you suspect the pipes are frozen, be careful when thawing them out because if the pipe has already burst, the water will come flowing out and flood your home. If a pipe has broken, turn off the water at the main shutoff valve, which is usually at the water meter or where the main water enters the house. If the water is still running and no pipes have burst, you can take the following steps. Of course, you can call a plumber if you suspect that your pipes are broken in your wall and you just can't find it. It also says that you can apply heat to a section of the pipe using an electric heating pad wrapped around the pipe, an electric hair dryer to blow it, or a portable space heater that is kept away from flammable materials, or by wrapping pipes with hot towels soaked 
you know, in hot water. And it does warn against you doing the following. Do not use a blowtorch, a kerosene or propane heater, a charcoal stove, or any device with an open flame. The high heat can damage the pipes or even start a fire. And I know that's common sense, but guys, some people don't have common sense. So not you, but some people. So if you do choose to apply the heat in the methods that I, I said, you know, the blow dryer, the hot towel and stuff like that, check all the other faucets in your home to make sure that they did not freeze as well. Because if one has frozen nine times out of 10, there is another somewhere else that has frozen. So space heaters, dangerous, dangerous, dangerous. So many people lose their lives using space heaters heaters each and every year. So if you're planning on using a space heater, here's some things you need to think about because, okay, my husband was in the military, then he was a firefighter, and we of course met working at a hospital, but lots of house fires, you guys, lots of house fires, and a lot of them were because of space heaters. So if you need supplemental heat, you can add a space heater to a room where pipes might be at risk. And though we don't recommend using a space heater in the bathroom, if you really need one, make sure it's plugged into an outlet with, with a GFCI and do not use an extension cord. Some space heaters have the GFCI plugs, but not all. So make sure you guys are careful with that. They do. They only have two that they recommend, and I will leave this link again in the description box so that you can look through it and see what Again, they share this video out, and I will see you guys in the next video. Leave some comments and tips down below for other people, things that I might not have thought about or whatever it is, but you guys, please be safe. Please be careful. This is something that's going to affect a lot a lot of people i'm worried for you heck i'm worried for me i'm worried for my husband who's out there on the road i'm seeing all of these accidents out here where the snow is already falling and some of them are tractor trailers some of them are just regular vehicles but either way it was very nerve-wracking watching him leave because i pray each and every time he leaves that he makes it home safely healthy as he left i really do appreciate each and every one of you if you are new to the channel, welcome cousin. How are you? I'm so glad you decided to hit that red button and become a family member. If you are returning, welcome back. It is good to see you. So y'all take care. Stay safe. Stay warm. Dress in layers. I didn't even touch on that. I forgot to touch on that. But dress in layers, you guys, especially if you're going to be outside for even a short period of time with temps being as low as they're going to be. My hands start to freeze when I'm out there feeding and watering my animals or doing something in the garden, which I don't intend to do this week, but I do have to go outside to tend to the animals. And whether I'm wearing gloves or not, my fingertips are frozen. My feet is frozen. So you guys be careful because that is dangerous. Take care. I love you. I love you, but God loves you more. He created only when you be the best you that you can be. And when you are, go out and spread God's love with distance. Peace, love, and light. Thanks for being here on Tommy Bites Homestead. And don't forget to check out my second channel, Tommy Bites TV, okay? Subscribe over there as well. Love you guys.